All right, guys, welcome to my video. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you get some really good value to, from this video on how to be an effective trainer. And I'm sharing this with years and years of experience of training and teaching myself and understand the human psychology, but I'm not gonna bore you with my resume. So um, I'm gonna dive straight into it. First thing on the first, I'm gonna take my camera with me and I'm gonna walk you over to one of my stations here where we just finished training uh, another team member, okay, you see this wall right here full of paper and stickies to hold these papers up. And the first thing I'm going to grab over here is this piece of paper here. Um, this is going to guide us through this video here. Um, and I've been really passionate about training people and understanding the human psychology. So that's why I'm making this video. Uh, so I'm gonna, we're going to dive right in, okay? So I'm just going to put this kind of on the side somewhere, and we will, we will go through it together, okay? I'm just going to put it right over there. Now, um, I'm going to list out the bullet point and, uh, of what we're going to be going through and what we're going to be talking about, okay? So the first thing I'm going to write down is framework. All right, so I'm just going to put a, a training, and I'll just put being effective. All right, and the first thing is framework. Now, I always say I hire people for their framework, not for their skill set or talent. It comes in a special occasion where they have special skills and talent, but I'm always interviewing people for their framework. A lot of times my, my, my colleagues will say, Derek, you ask weird questions over the phone when you're doing a phone interview. And yes, those are weird questions because I want to understand their framework, their habits, their behaviors, okay? So first thing on that paper there is framework, mental habits. And that is so important because if the framework is wrong, Generally, what we try to train next doesn't go in well, right? We have to understand how the brain is framed first, then we can actually put in those components, okay? A um, lot of this material here, you're gonna, you might have seen on other videos already, but if not, also, I'm also gonna add in my couple of uh, two cents in there as well too over those years uh, through my own perspective, okay? So I put mental habits, and then I'm gonna jump into theory. This is how I do all my training here. Theory, which is whiteboard. All right. You guys can, hopefully you guys, yeah, you guys can see that. You guys are smart people. Then we're going to go into um, hands-on. Okay. I'm just giving some more space. Hands-on. And I always list these three things. It's audio, because this, this is where I got off the internet. Uh, this is what I learned from other people, is the three effective things are audio. Some people are audio learners. Some people are uh, kinesthetics. Okay. And then video, or audio, video, yeah, visual. These are the three components that I've always learned to be an effective trainer, okay? Um but we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into that. Okay, and then call to action, CTA. Call to action, okay. And then consistency. Okay, consistency. And I'm gonna add teach you. It's a lot. I need more room. I need a bigger whiteboard. And um, I'm going to put the very end here. Um, constantly update. Constantly update. Oh, you can't even see that anymore. Okay. Constantly update training material. I don't strive for perfection, I strive for progress, so that's why this video isn't so pretty, but you're gonna get some good value from this, okay, guys? All right, so first thing first, framework, mental habits. 
Uh, and the reason why you saw that whiteboard just a moment ago is because every time we write on this whiteboard, okay, right over here, that whiteboard there, we print it out, okay? Uh, we print them out and we stick them all over the walls, okay? So, you guys can see that that is a whiteboard right over here, printed out. So, we, the reason why we do that is because we focus on the framework and the framework is the habits and the way to get things into people's um, mental habit is actually a, a what we call practice makes perfect, right? So we don't just sit in a training room and we train on one subject and then we, um, we, we, we don't talk about it again. So every day when our uh, trainees are train, uh, the, the trainees are coming back into training every day, we go to that whiteboard there and we, I, I have them uh, review everything all over from head to toe every day, every day. It's redundant, it's mundane, but it's making sure that it stays fresh to them. Meaning, the moment we talk about it and we print it out, you can also associate exactly, you can remember what we talked about yesterday. And then if you keep repeating that every day uh, for a week to two weeks to three weeks straight, it gets into the framework, okay? It gets into the mental habit, okay? Uh, but being consistent about this as well too, okay? So the last thing is being consistent is reviewing it every day, reviewing it every day, making sure you guys are talking about the same thing over and over. Even if you feel like you got it and they got it, just add a couple more days into it, okay? Don't give up so quickly. Um, don't give up on yourself so quickly. Continue to revisit that whiteboard there that you saw um, and print out everything and review every little bullet point. Make them teach you back, okay? Make them teach you. So we, there's always, there's, in psychology, this is the brain, right? And I divide it in half because generally when you're listening, audio, kinesthetic, and visual, you're practicing a, a part of the brain, okay? I'm just going to put kinesthetic, audio, and visual, all right? When people are learning, when people are receiving the data from your mouth that you're telling them, they use a, one side of the brain. Okay, but the moment you say, hey, I want you to teach me as if I'm somebody new, right? Now, that's a whole different sport now. It uses a complete different brain. This is the teaching brain here, okay? It uses a complete different brain. So that's a good practice. You always want to make them recite it back, which is why we visit a whiteboard, which is why I have them sometimes make videos. They actually record themselves talking on the screen through a software called OBS, October Bravo Sam, if you want to look that up, it's free. And uh, they, they teach me, or I tell them, I tell my, my, my uh, uh, team members, I want you to make a video as if you're training five other people and they're going to watch this video. Now you're practicing using the opposite brain, okay, for them, all right? Once you could complete this puzzle, kind of like a game, right? Comes together, right? Uh, comes together. Uh, it absorbs into the brain and then it actually becomes what they called understanding the process. I'm just gonna put P versus memorizing. Okay, the process. That's one question I usually ask the, 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 the people that I'm training is hey, do you, are you memorizing everything or are you understanding it? Right? Because it's, it's, it's more important for them to understand the process than it is to memorize it. Because memorizing, you, you could probably forget if you don't use it once or twice. But if you understand the full process, right, gen generally it will stick even months after, hopefully, right? Then we go to theory, whiteboard, okay, guys? Whiteboard is important. Why? Because you want to draw concepts. You want to draw boxes. You know, it does this, then this does this, and that does this, and this comes back. Then it helps them see the big picture, understanding the big picture, okay? Big picture. A lot of times, I always see um, some people, when I, when I used to train, people get tired, they start yawning. Uh, the reason being is I, I feel through um, understanding psychology is they're not, um, they're, they're taking it, they're, they're, they're in the work of doing and trying to understand that work of doing when they can't see the big picture. Hey, today we're going to talk, for example, hey, today we're going to talk about these three things. These are the steps. Um, 
you know, these three steps. First we do this, this, and this, and this, and this. Then we do that, that, and that, and that. And then this, this, and this. And the reason why, it's the big picture. Always starting with the big picture first. Like how I kind of bullet pointed everything out here for you guys, right? Big picture first, okay? Then we always want to be mindful when we are training. We are using hands-on. Uh, we call it hands-on training now because they're actually... Um, there's kinesthetic involved, meaning they're actually doing the work, right? So meaning, if, I, if I've been training for two hours, talking, doing all the work, and they're just standing there listening and watching, well, they're not kinesthetically yet, right? It's, it's not hands-on enough yet, okay? All right, hands-on. They haven't actually got into it doing it. And a lot of times, um, I, I, I like to see that. I want to make sure, hey, they're doing it. And I don't say a thing. I don't say a word. I want them to, to kind of hit the wall and not know the answer, but still not say anything yet. Like, let them sort of think it out. Let them sort of contemplate it, you know. Let, their, let them challenge themselves to try to figure it out. Because the moment they figure it out, they will always remember it. But the moment you keep telling them the answer, they're going to forget it, right? That's something I always learn. Kinesthetic. Visual. Audio, kinesthetic, and visual. Very important. Make them show you. Um, a lot of times when I see uh, training happen, they all, it's a lot of talking for us. Like we do it like this, we do it like that, this is how you do it, this is what you click, this is what you do after, this is where it goes after. But there's not enough, uh, now I want to see you do it and I'm not going to say a word, I'm going to just let you do it and then really see what I call the ultimate truth of what they actually know versus them saying, I got it, right? A lot of times when you train, um, a lot of times when I trained uh, in my early, early stages of training, I hear people say, I got it. I understand. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. And then like two weeks later, when the problem turns, when the problem actually arises, you go, wait a minute. I thought you got it. But in actuality, the kinesthetic was never there. We never tested them. We never asked them, show me everything you know from head to toe. And I'm not going to say a word. Okay. As if I'm not here. I want you to do it as if I'm not here. I want to make sure that you actually got it. Okay, guys. Now, after the training, we call what we, there's something we implement here at our company. It's called call to action, CTA. Okay. Call to action. It's creating a plan. It's saying, hey, you know what? After a meeting, after training, after, you know, uh, um, a, a conversation with somebody, who, what is the call to action? Meaning, what are you going to do next and what am I going to do next, right? Because a lot of times we end the meeting, it's kind of like this big fluff of just all this data being spit across the room and all these brains are just like falling asleep 30 minutes into it and you have these two one-hour meetings, which is actually a no-no. Um, I'll tell you that later on. Um, you want to make sure that you guys create a plan. All right, now that we talked about it, let's put in black and white what I'm going to do, what you're going to do. And if I do this, you do this. You do that, I do this. You guys got to uh, you know, create that camaraderie of, hey, sort of like a, a real life scenario. When I do this, you're going to do that. When I do this, you're going to do this. And then you're going to do that. I'm going to do this. Whatever it takes, right? It's get to get that clear communication across. I always say in uh, my other piece of paper, over communicating is better than under communicating. Okay. So I'm just going to go erase this here. Over communicate. We always feel silly when we do this. I notice some people feel silly. Over communicate. The reason being is because school never really taught the, taught the art of communication, and it's not a uh, subject that is. It's not really a big subject. It's not really something that the world talks about. It's not a sexy subject. Therefore, when we over communicate, we feel like we feel this resistance of, oh, I'm talking too much, or, um, you know, you feel this sort of resistance emotion of like, okay, I'm not going to say anymore. Okay, I, I, I think they got it. I don't want to be a control freak or a controller. No, it's not controlling. It's over communicating, making sure every step of the way, hey, when I do this, what are you going to do? And sort of test them. In training, you want to test and probe answers out of them versus telling them, right? So that's one thing I truly believe in is over-communicating is better than under-communicating, okay, guys? Uh, call to action, consistency, teaching you. So making sure that once you guys set a plan, making sure you're consistent about the plan, uh, and then have them teach you back, okay? Something that... 
uh, we, we do a lot here is show me or I want you to record yourself and I'll watch the video after, okay? Um, very last thing I have here is consistently update training material. If you look at this piece of paper here, if you could see this, it started with whiteboard, right? All these black fonts right here. Then it kind of got a little bit darker because we started writing things in, right? Then we started writing in red marker and then some pen marks on the bottom, you know? So constantly updating your training material. When you're a trainer, you, you got to always have the MQ mode. Um, you know, there's IQ, EQ, and an MQ. MQ is sort of putting yourself in other people's perspective and position. How are they receiving this data here? How are they intaking this information? Are they retaining it? Are they memorizing it? Are they understanding it? So always update your information there. Uh, update your training material and revisit it. Make tweaks when you start to catch, you know, throughout the day you're starting to catch uh, people maybe do something in a strange way and that you don't, that you see, okay, that, that's, that's a yellow flag that their habit is working on and they're going to be, it's going to become a red flag. And the moment they hit a red flag, that's when errors happen and error happens, cost business money, cost your assembly line money and things of that nature. Okay guys. So I hope you guys can see this here. You can screenshot this, print this out for yourself, rewrite it for yourself. Uh, stick this on the wall, right? Remind yourself. Uh, they say if you don't see it every day, you, you, you won't achieve it every day. You won't get towards your goal. So that's why we do this uh, whiteboard where we sort of stick everything all over the wall. It looks like a war room in here. It, sh it should look like a war room, right? Everything is stuck all over the walls. We've got papers everywhere, you know, whiteboards. There's not enough whiteboards, obviously. That's why we print things out. So I hope this video sort of shares with you guys uh, how to be an effective trainer having MQ. Um, so uh, leave a comment below, any messages or any comments, uh, go ahead and comment below. I'll get back to you guys there. Have a great day. Love you guys. Bye. All right. I forgot something or I can call this a extra bonus point, guys. So one thing I want to talk about here is the red font here. It says reminder slash culture. Don't be frustrated. It's something I always tell our team here who is training who are going to be training or who will need to be in a position of training or teaching or coaching others, right? Is don't be frustrated when you have to remind your team over and over and over. Uh, remember, culture doesn't happen overnight. Culture sometimes take up to two months to six months to a year to a year and a half for some systems to be in the holacracy mode, to be in the automation mode, to be in the mindless mode, to be in the subconsciousness of everybody. So don't be frustrated because you have to repeat yourself once or twice or three times because a lot of that's I that's where I see a lot of my friends who own businesses or if they complain about employees, it's because they don't want to remind people. They just assume, hey, you come smart, you come perfect, you come like a robot, you come ready, 100% ready to go. And it doesn't happen that way. In real life, in real people, in human behaviors, science shows age 25 and up usually needs trauma to learn. They can't just remember something or execute something based on what they read or hear from other people. Sometimes they need a little bit of trauma. So sometimes when we train here, we like to show videos of people actually stealing, people of actually, you know, being uh, of, of other things that we don't uh, want to happen any any further, right? We show the we show the, the side of the business that is not so sexy, that is already like, wow, that is crazy that that happened. I saw it on video. That tends to stick with people's minds more, okay? So again, um, culture takes time. Um, if you feel like you have to remind people over and over and over, you're doing the right job. You're over communicating correctly. You are doing the right thing. Don't feel like, oh my God, my team is not getting it. Oh, they're just dumb people. No, it's the trainer that's dumb. All right. If you can't get your team to do what you need them to do, it's not their fault. It's your fault. If you can't put in a compensation plan to get them to sell more or work harder or work smarter, it's not their fault. It's your fault. So never blame the people. Always point the finger to yourself. What can I do to use psychology to get them to do what I need them to do? You know, so I hope this video, uh, this last point really helps you guys out. Uh, my name is Derek. Talk to you guys later. Bye.